一次命。At the beginning of the movie, we see Izumi, who lives with her mother and grandfather. She had three missed calls from an unknown number on her phone, and when her mother goes to get some more tea from her grandfather, he gets horrified to see someone outside in the garden and says it's back. Later that night, Izumi again gets a call from that unknown number and she finds that it's an old friend Mika, and she is calling her after 10 years. Mika asks her if she is free on set for a meetup to which Izumi agrees. We then see a boss lady alone in her office when she notices a hotel in front of their building and a woman in red kimono there taking off her clothes. Now she becomes curious to see her face and when that girl looks at her, she gets shocked to see that it is her face. She thinks it might be due to tiredness, but then she sees the same woman from the other window pointing to the other side. When she looks there, the hallway lights start turning off and something starts rolling towards her. She then gets terrified seeing a huge face in front of her and with her scream, the screen goes black. Meanwhile, Izumi returns home and her mother tells her that grandma took off. Izumi comes to a playground looking for him and asks him what he is doing here. He says he doesn't want to go home because it keeps looking at him, staring from the tree in the garden. Izumi tries to explain to him that it doesn't exist and then takes him from there. We then see Mizunuma from Real Side Finance. He calls Yamashita and threatens to pay back their money. Yamashita says he is a snake and tells him to go to hell. He then starts calling another man when he hits a girl, but when he comes out to check, he finds no one there. Later, he stops by at a public toilet, where he finds go to hell written on the walls, and only then he notices someone outside. When he comes out, he finds that his car was filled with water, and only then does a light start flickering there. He then sees a girl standing with an umbrella behind him. He angrily asks her who is she, but only then he sees that the girl has only one leg. She then jumps and comes in front of him, and he takes out a knife from his pocket to scare her, but she breaks it with her powers. Seeing this, Mizunuma gets terrified and runs to escape, but we see her chasing him, and the screen goes black with his scream, and then we see him standing with that girl. Here Grandpa hears a girl giggling and he says it's back. Izumi and her mom see him and she asks her mom what could he be fighting. She tells her he used to say, among those who don't realize they are dead, and those who wander with regret, some will do harm to humans. When that happens, we must fight. Izumi asks if this means there is something there, to which her mom makes fun of her for believing it. Grandpa then gives her an amulet when she is leaving home, and when she asks what is it, he says it's damn you. We then see two kids fishing, and one of them gets a strange wooden plank. He then sees through it and tells the other kid that something came out of the sea, but the other kid says there is nothing. The kid starts getting scared and tells him that he can see it through the hole. He then passes the board to him, and he also sees something. The kid then says it opened its eyes and asks him if it's Kaiju, to which he says it's just some weird building. Now a man sitting nearby is getting irritated listening to them, and those children start screaming in fear and run away from there. He picks up that board and sees through it, and he also sees something, which was not visible without that board, and when he sees it again. The monster comes closer to him and opens its mouth, and he sees many hands coming out of his mouth in place of teeth, and two faces of a girl appear in place of its eyes. We then see Grandpa watching the news that on the seawall in Chiba, a self-employed man named Ryu was fishing and went missing. He starts praying watching it, and only then he hears a girl giggling from outside. Meanwhile, Izumi meets her friend Mika, and we see two photographers Jenda and Sato there. They enter an abandoned building to click some random photographs when Jenda calls Sato and shows him two legs of a girl. They start clicking pictures thinking it is a mannequin, but Jenda says it could be a person. Sato gets scared and asks if should they call the police, but Jenda asks him to hold on and pull her out. He tries to pull her and says she is heavy, and only then do they get shocked to see that her head is locked in a box. Jenda then asks him to pry it open, and when Sato tries to open it, the rod break, but the box does not open. Only then Jenda notices water coming out of the box, and when he splashes water on Sato, he finds that it's seawater. Then suddenly the box opens with the force of water knocking Jenda down, and Sato sees a face coming out from the water. 
The girl opens her eyes and gets up, and as she screams, Jenda knocks the box away and the girl starts laughing. He gets terrified seeing this and runs away, and Sato sees the girl picking up the box and putting it back in its place. She then starts moving towards Sato, and as he tries to escape, the screen goes black. We then see Izumi and Mika at a restaurant, where Mika draws an apple that she used to draw in her childhood, and this is the same drawing that Sato had seen in that abandoned building. Just then Mika's phone rings but she does not attend the call. After this, we see Yasuke, who stays in room number 666 of a hotel. There he sees a woman in a red kimono standing on the balcony. We then see him sketching that lady when his girlfriend Mamika comes there and asks her who is the model and why he is skipping the class. He tells her he saw her from a hotel window the other day. The next day, Mamika notices that he is not in the class, and later when she tries to call him, he doesn't pick up her call. She goes to his apartment and says the hotel he saw her from, it doesn't exist. She asks him where did he really stay and who is that lady. Yasuke stops sketching and says almost done, and that she was watching all the time, every single day, staring at the spot where the baby fell. Mamika asks him what he is saying, but he starts sketching again. She gets scared, tears up all his sketches, and throws them out the window, and when she comes back, Yasuke gets up and jumps out of the window. Mamika comes downstairs where she sees Yasuke's dead body, and only then she looks up and sees that lady looking down from the window. Then some of the sketches that Yasuke had been sketching all these days fall down. And seeing them, Mamika understands that the woman is Rokiroku, and then Rokiroku reaches Mamika through her long neck. We then see Izumi and Mika in front of the same hotel, and they decide to go to the restaurant of the hotel. Mika tells her that she is getting married to a 30-year-old guy and they are living together for two years, but he is in debt. Then Mika goes to use the washroom, and Izumi checks her phone, she sees 58 missed calls from Kento. Just then Kento calls again, and when Izumi picks up the call, he angrily asks her to come home now or he will kill her. We then see two ladies talking about Grandpa, that he is suddenly swinging his cane and telling damn you. Then the daughter of one of them comes there with a stroller and tells her that a strange lady gave this to her. Her mom asks her where was it, to which Kana says the cat park. She asks her what is this stuff, and she says she said it was a baby cat, and she promised her to take care of it. The other lady asks her doesn't it smell bad. She then sends Kana home and goes to the park to return the stroller. But when she doesn't find anyone there, she leaves it there and goes away. Now when she returns home, she finds that stroller outside her apartment. She angrily throws it in the garbage. But when she comes back to her house, she sees a strange woman bringing that stroller back there. She gets terrified seeing this and asks Kana to open the door, but only then does the woman scream in a cat voice, and seeing this, she runs into the basement. But then she sees that stroller there again, and that cat lady attacks and kills her. Later, Kana comes out of the apartment and finds that stroller there, and we see her mother's head wrapped in paper. After this, we see a hospital, where a nurse named Azusa hears some sounds from room number 406. In that room, there is a female patient named Kusunoki who is behaving very strangely. Now as Azusa goes near her, her spectacles break, and because of the darkness, she cannot see anything clearly. She starts searching for her glasses, and we see that Kusunaki is an evil entity with one big red eye, and she falls trying to catch her. Azusa takes out her phone and calls reception to tell them that Kusunoki in room 406 has taken a turn for the worse, but she gets shocked to know that Kusunoki left the hospital this evening and no one is supposed to be there. Suddenly that evil entity catches her from behind and then kills her by gouging out one of her eyes. Here Mika learns that Izumi answered her phone and she gets angry with her. Izumi apologizes and says she thinks she should reconsider, but Mika says she knows nothing and asks her not to judge her. Now they both get into an argument, and Izumi says she is just like before, and try to ignore what's inconvenient. Then suddenly Izumi's hairpin breaks and falls down, and she gets a call from her mom, who tells her her grandpa has died. We then see grandpa and his boss working at a hotel site. They take a tea break and his boss tells him about his granddaughter Kazuko. He says a grandchild is more adorable than a child and he will understand when he has a grandchild of his own. Then suddenly the wind blows and the photo splits into two pieces. Grandpa goes to pick up the photo when his boss's cigarette also gets cut. After this event pipe gets cut and many pipes fall on Grandpa. Now when his boss goes to check on him, they hear a girl laughing from behind. When he goes there to check, he sees a strange entity there called Kametachi, which moves very fast, and kills him by cutting him into two pieces. She then starts moving toward Grandpa and he gets terrified seeing her, but then his hand falls on a container containing nuts and he sees that the entity is scared of its sound. He picks up that container and tries to drive Kametachi away, but only then he falls and then sees that Kametachi is gone but she says she shall return. After that, he makes an amulet using those nuts and it was the same amulet that he had given to Izumi, and the invisible entity that Grandpa used to fight with was none other than Kametachi, who had returned to kill him after many years, 
but because he has given his charm to Izumi, she kills him this time. The scene now shifts to the present, where Izumi tells Mika that something happened and she has to go, but only then someone falls from the hotel's roof. We then see Maharu on the hotel's roof, remembering her friend Yoko. She gets a call from her friends, who asks her where is she, and she tells them she is on the 12th floor, on the roof. Nia asks her do they really got to go all the way up to the roof, to which Maharu says it's closer to heaven up here, so maybe she will hear them better. But only then she gets scared seeing someone behind her and a strong gust of wind throws her away in the air. The rest of the girls decide to go to the top floor, but Nia sits on the stairs there. Now when they reach there, they do not find Maharu there and they think that she must have gone to the washroom. They also remember their friend Yoko, who committed suicide by jumping from this place. Now when Nia comes there, they ask her to come upstairs, but only then does she sees a huge entity sitting behind them, and as they look back, the entity screams, due to which all three of them also fly in the air. The entity then looks toward her and screams loudly, and Maharu is the one who fell from the roof when Izumi was about to leave, and after that other three girls also falls there. Mika and Izumi get terrified seeing this and flee there, but they find that the door of that hotel is locked. Izumi calms her down and asks her to find another exit, and shortly after, they find Mika Mark on a wall there. After this, they reach in front of room number 666, and Izumi says she knows this place. When they were kids, they played Explorer. They entered a strange building, but couldn't get out. Mika says that she did something stupid. She reveals that she is pregnant, and she had promised Rokuroku that she would give her first child to her. Now the door of room number 666 opens, and they see that Rokuroku is sitting inside wearing her red kimono. She then extends her neck and moves towards Mika, and reminds her of her promise. But Mika says she doesn't know anything about the promise and runs away from there, and when Rokuroku turns towards Izumi, she sees that Damu amulet with her, and disappears from there. She then starts chasing Mika, and Mika hides at a place. Only then Izumi reaches her and they both try to escape from that place, but suddenly they reach the seawall at Chiba. Now before they could understand anything, Yumabazu comes out of the water and swallows both of them. After this, both of them find themselves in front of Norikabe and start running away from there, and when they enter a room, they reach the black and white realm where they see Karakasa, and then they encounter Hidetsume. Now when they feel that they have escaped, they see Hokoama on their way, and then Nekame also comes there from behind them. They try to run away from there, but Kametachi attacks them, and they manage to reach the rooftop. Mika asks her what are they, and here she remembers her mother saying among those who don't realize they are dead, and those who wander with regret, some will do harm to humans. When that happens, we must fight. She also remembers that in childhood, this is the place where they jumped before. She goes to the edge of the roof with Mika and tells her that they jumped from there and they got out. Mika says she can't do it, but when Izumi holds her hand, she tells her that the real reason to see her was that she has made a promise that when pregnant, she would be the first to know. Now they are about to jump from there when we see Deidara sitting behind them and she blows them away. They then fall into Rokuroku's world where she had imprisoned many newborn kids. Then Rokuroku also comes there and Mika gets terrified seeing her. Only then Izumi notices that her charm is not with her and she sees herself showing her the charm. She runs towards the charm to get it and Rokuroku tries to stop her, but she manages to dodge her and grab the charm. She then throws it toward her, and as it hits her, there is a big explosion, due to which Izumi falls behind. They then see that she is not dead, but only one of her eyes is gone, however, a portal to their world has opened. Nika asks her to run, and she will get her attention, and after she does, she will follow her. She then gets up and tells her that if she makes a promise, it's to her baby and she will never hand her child over. Meanwhile, Izumi was trying to escape, but Roku Roku turns towards her and here we come to know that Izumi had also made a promise to her. Now both of them try to escape from there, but Roku Roku follows them and catches Mika, due to which she stays there and Izumi falls out of the portal. Then after some time when Izumi wakes up, she sees the hotel in front of her and countless hands emerge from its foundation. The hotel then starts walking and Izumi watches it leave and asks herself what on earth did she promise. She can't remember, but that woman will surely turn up again to fulfill the promise, along with that horrifying hotel. The hotel then vanishes in front of her eyes, and the movie ends here. Please like and subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon never to miss new video updates. Thanks for watching.